Today is Wednesday of Holy Week. And as we get ever nearer the cross each day, today is the day the gospel writers record the Jewish religious leaders plotting to see the Messiah killed and one of Jesus' closest followers hatching a plan to turn Jesus over to them. Mark records the events this way in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. It was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money, and he sought an opportunity to betray him. Judas might have thought himself very clever and original for devising a plan that in his mind would both put a stop to Jesus and put some money in his own pockets. But the Holy Spirit inspired King David around a thousand years before Christ's birth to write the psalm that foretold Judas's wicked strategy in detail, Psalm 41. In that psalm, as David laments his many enemies, he says, All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say, A deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. The night before Jesus was crucified for the sins of his people, as he shares the last supper with his disciples and washes their feet. Jesus quotes that portion of Psalm 41, he who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me, when he tells his disciples that one of them will betray him. But Psalm 41 doesn't end in lament over betrayal. No, it resolves in victory and hope in God. King David writes, by this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout in triumph over me, but you have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your presence forever. While Jesus' enemies might have shouted in triumph as they saw the Son of God hanging lifeless from a criminal's cross on Friday, Sunday morning brought with it a gloriously empty tomb. God indeed upheld Jesus because of his integrity and he set his Son in his presence forever at his right hand. And God will one day do the same for all who've turned from their sins and trusted in the Son. And so both now and in eternity, we who are Jesus' people, even though we're still beset by enemies like sin and death for now, we can say, as David does to close Psalm 41, and as Jesus did throughout his life, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen.